Hello everyone, I am Siddhartha. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how we can create a SageMaker notebook instance in AWS. SageMaker will be really helpful for data scientists and machine learning engineers because this SageMaker is a fully managed service. That means we don't have to worry about setting up the required infrastructure for this. We don't worry about setting up the environment, setting up all the libraries and so on. So all these are uh, done so that we can directly go there train our models, deploy this and so on. So this is all about SageMaker and in this video, let's uh, look at this specific aspect within SageMaker that is SageMaker Notebook Instances. So these are just like your Jupyter Notebooks or like your Google Collaboratory where you can create these uh, SageMaker Notebooks and work on it. And this is really crucial in this particular point of time because uh, let's say you are working with a open source LLM like Llama or Llama 2. So these models, right? So Llama and Llama 2 are pretty big and most of us can't load this in our local machines. So we have to go with some cloud uh, providers, right? And this SageMaker notebook instances kind of give uh, access to this large instances that have like 100 gigs of uh, GPU and so on that helps you to load even like the larger versions of this Llama 2 and other models. So it's really helpful for you in order to understand this, uh, how this would work in a cloud space, how you can set up this notebook instances in AWS so that you can work on tasks like this. And the other aspect is I've seen a lot of people and they are really good with machine learning and deep learning. And I would say there are not a lot of people who are focusing a lot on uh, cloud on which we are going to kind of run our ML, right? So uh, again, it's, it's very important in this particular point because we know that uh, the deployment is always going to be on cloud and, it, and it's like really crucial in order to understand how this work on major cloud providers like AWS and Azure. So in this video series, like I'm planning to make this videos on SageMaker and how you can pre-process data on SageMaker, how you can train this and so on. So this is like just a start of this. So in this video, I'll show you how you can create this notebook instance. And in the meantime, I'll also uh, let you know about different services that are available in SageMaker as well. So uh, if you have a free uh, tier AWS account, so you should be good with this. But even if not, I would suggest you to uh, sign up with a paid one too. But again, this won't cost too much, but uh, I would kind of suggest you to keep track of the pricing and so on. But if you have a company account, right? So if you're working in an organization, they probably have like AWS or Azure account. So you can just go with that. That's like a better option. So with that being said, let's get into this video of creating this uh, SageMaker notebook instance. So I have logged into my uh, AWS console. So if again, you are having your account. So some of you may have this access to your console. So if you're working in an organization, depending on your permission, you may not be able to access like console, but more or less you should be having that permission. If not, you can request your IT admin to give that particular access because some things are like really easier in order to access it. Okay. So once you are in your uh, AWS console, you can go to the search bar and search SageMaker. So we have this Amazon SageMaker build, train and deploy machine learning models. So this is built specifically for machine learning and deep learning use cases. So let's open this. So we have something called as SageMaker Studio where all these services are kind of like integrated in that. Uh, but maybe we can look into that a bit later. So you have this studio, right? So that's what we call as SageMaker Studio. But uh, here we are going to focus on the notebook instances. So the one that you are seeing here, notebook. So similarly, we have this processing. So this we call this as processing job, which is used to kind of process a large data set and then you have this training jobs. So in this training jobs, we can say that this is the instance that I want to create. So when you say that and you have this script to train the model, let's say that you have a very large deep learning model and you want to train it. Let's say you can't train it from your local machine because you have a you know smaller machine that has let's say 4 GB GPU or something, right? So in that cases, you can provision a larger instance in AWS SageMaker and train it. The other way to do it is uh, get a EC2 and do it. But again, uh, the costs can be a bit more because EC2 is, is kind of like a general purpose resource, right? It's going to be useful for other purpose as well. But if you are just solely into training the models, then the process of training becomes easier. So EC2 
again might reduce cost in some cases but if you want ease of use SageMaker is going to be a better option because you can do all this training and the deployment is also easier so you have this inference right so we have this uh, endpoints so you can also deploy this uh, trained models as endpoints so if you are doing that on an easy to that's probably going to take a lot of work so that's other thing so we will uh, later uh, in, in upcoming videos I'll explain you how you can create this training jobs deploy models on uh, inference endpoints and so on so today let's just focus on this notebook instance so as i said once you you are logged into your uh, aws console you can navigate to amazon SageMaker from the search bar so from there go to this notebook instance so this is uh, my notebook instance page and you can all, also have this git repository page so here i'll go to this notebook instance and you can give this create notebook instance so here you will see the notebook instances that are currently available in your uh, kind of account but we don't have any so here we have this one then again this is uh, also helpful when you are collaborating so let's say that uh, usually what would happen right so there will be an organization account uh, even an organization can have like multiple accounts within a particular subscription and you will be having like different uses so you can also collaborate with other people's notebooks too so that's like possible so collaboration becomes like a lot easier so that's like the other thing so i'll go to this create notebook instance and here we have to give a name so here i'll uh, give this name youtube demo SageMaker for this particular video and here i'm going to choose an instance so this is where you can choose this instance so we have here we have this mlt2 medium mlt2 large t2 uh, x large and so on so these are the different uh, sizes of instances that are available okay so ml uh, again it's like kind of built for this ml aspects you would also have this easy to that would start with t2 dot medium t2 dot large and so on so these are the different instance so this is a very critical step because you can't just go ahead and choose any instance right so we have to look at our use case we have to look at the model that we are going to train and, and estimate what's the size of the machine that's ideal for my use case so this is just a demo so i'm going with t uh, mlt3 medium and the other reason that i'm choosing this is uh, it's kind of uh, free for the first two months so aws offers this free tier where yes three i think it's free for like some amount of time and all these resources are free for some amount of time and SageMaker is uh, free for like first two months so i can say SageMaker pricing just go to google and search for SageMaker pricing so you have this amazon SageMaker pricing right so if you scroll below so you have this amazon sage maker free tier if you are just working on your personal project i would suggest you to explore this but again if you're in an organization they probably have a budget and you can just explore it there so you have this free tier page right i can zoom it a bit so we have this amazon sage maker free tier and studio notebooks and notebook instance studio notebooks is the ones that you create in sage maker studio and then we have this notebook instances which is what we are going to create and in this free tier right free tier usage per month for the first two months so for the first two months you'll be having some provisions to create like free instances so 250 hours of ml t3 medium instance on studio notebook and 250 hours of ml t2 medium instance or this on notebook instance so ml t2 medium and ml t3 medium are available uh, like i mean it's the free tier available so it's not going to incur you any cost for the first two months so we can kind of use this one uh, now the other aspect of this pricing is you are going to be charged for the amount of time that this instance is running so let's say that you are creating a notebook instance and, and you are training a model so you would start this notebook instance go ahead and create a notebook you start coding and you train this right so let's say you uh, took two hours to complete that so you will be charged for that two hours or the other thing that you could do is let's say you have all this code ready but you haven't ran that code in your local machine because you don't have that size so you do all this code you just open this notebook instance upload your notebook and just run this so that you reduce the time it takes so these are like a bit nuanced thing that we need to understand but the main takeaway here is you are charged charged for like uh you know the time that you are using this instance so it's like per hour so if you are using like 30 minutes you will be charged for that particular amount of time so these 250 hours are free so again if you are starting just you can go with this ml t2 medium or t3 medium just to understand how this would work so we have this t2 dot medium and t3 dot medium those things okay so here i'll choose M ml dot t3 dot medium so if you just scroll below right you will see the sizes of this as well as well as the price of this 
so ml t3 medium again the pricing would change in different uh location so my location is on north virginia so uh, uh, this is i think us east one and then you have this uh why you so uh, again you have this different uh us east two and other things as well so your i mean pricing is going to change based on that uh i have this ml t3 medium so i can maybe also choose like uh Asian server or something like that so that should also work so we have this ml3 t3 medium some instance may not be available in a region so we have this vcpu memory so we can see this is like a pretty smaller machine the ram is 4 uh, gigabytes and the price per hour is 0 0.05 so this is not that much if you plan it for an hour for this price this is not that much but again for machine learning use case this smaller machine is not going to be used for us, right? So these are like standard instances. Again, general purpose, you can use it for exploration and stuff. So you have this 4 GB memory, 8 GB memory, 16 GB memory, 32 gigabytes and so on. So this is like pretty reasonable. So you have like this, these many vCPUs and this memory and that's coming for 0 0.3 MLA. And that's because you don't have any GPU here. So that's like another uh, catch here. So you, you have this standard instances and then you have this compute optimized where you have this increased computational power. And that's like really helpful when you're doing some, uh, I mean, a, a lot of data processing. In that cases, you can use compute optimized and even this won't have GPU access. And then you have this memory optimized. So this memory optimized comes with larger uh, RAM. So if you see this, like this goes up to 768 gigabytes of RAM, which is like pretty huge right it's almost one tb of ram which is like huge and this is helpful when you are dealing with a very large data set like let's say enterprise level data sets you are going to kind of work with like machines of probably this size when you are processing this and the price is also a bit high and then we have this accelerated computing is the one that has gpu access and when you are training a deep learning model you are going to use like some of these uh instances so we have this p4 p4 uh, instance types p3 instance types and also have g5 so all these kind of comes with different uh, gpus so uh, g5 may have like a different nvidia gpu and, and p3 may have a different nvidia gpus so we can look into all those informations but yeah so it's like accelerated computing if you see this here the memory is like pretty huge and the vcpu number that we have is also like huge 96 and the gpu size will also be high and the price is like way huge which is 37 dollars per hour you can just calculate how much it is in indian money this is per hour pricing not month or something so this is like per hour pricing okay so all these things are here so you can basically uh search for this instant look at its spec and see if that is required for your use case and again if you are working with uh, let's say uh 70 billion llama 2 model right so that model i think should be around 150 gigabytes and if you are loading it loading that on gpu you need like a machine that has like uh, 150 190 amount of GPU. so in that case uh, something like this mlg 540 x large should be good for them so that's like one thing right so you have to look at the use case and decide this again for llm you have this quantization that means you can reduce the size of the model to a lower person to and, and use it but yeah so you have to look at the model size and, and just do an estimate and see like uh, what's the machine that i'm going to use whether that cost is reasonable for me so you have to take into account all these details and let's say you want to take a particular example let's say that this is the instance that i'm going to use and it comes with 32 gigabytes of memory the pricing is 1.52 right so you can just go to google paste this here and uh, just search this so you would have this sites that would give the pricing and you have this vantage cloud cost so you can go to this to check the pricing and specs so sometimes the pricing may not be accurate so here the pricing it says like 1.52 right so again this gives g5 2x which is the pricing of those ec2 instances but these are for SageMaker. but so the price may differ slightly but uh don't look at the pricing in this page look at the pricing always in the official aws page but this is helpful to look at the uh, you know detailed spec for this so we have this 32 gigabytes of uh you know memory and like 8 vcpu so we have that and the gpu is nvidia a10g and uh gpu memory is one so it's like a pretty uh, probably like a pretty smaller machine sorry yeah so that's the gpu we have the video memory is like 24 gb sorry so gpu means like how many gpus are there so this is like one gpu so you also have this multi gpu machines so if i go to this 48x large right so here you have this uh 
eight gpus so if you load a large model so that will be split and loaded into all these gpus for like efficient use and this comes with like 192 gigabytes of uh, video memory so you can think about what's the cost of this machine is going to be if you want to set it up like as a physical machine right so this is like pretty huge so probably these are used mainly in servers and not for like personal computers i would say but this is it so you can refer to this for this specifications and so on so you need to uh, i mean i know that i'm taking a lot of time but this is like very crucial so going into this instances uh understanding it and also making sure that your budget or your organization budget for your account right doesn't exceed uh so that's like very critical so you have to look at all those things and and choose this instance so you will see all those instances here so if you are let's say working with deep learning stuff you can instead of going to like a standard instance if you can go to the uh you know the accelerated computing and, and choose something here so for this demo i'm just going going with like the least instance so that i'm not incurring that much cost and you also have this options of you only have this linux thing but you don't have to kind of worry about this because you're not going to work uh with any folders or something right so it, it, it doesn't matter if it's on windows or linux but you would have this linux thing all we are going to access is just like a jupyter notebook uh thing so this is not that important for us so we have linux 2 jupyter lab 1 and then we have this version of jupyter lab 3 which is the advanced one so the default one is 3 you can choose this and if you want to go to a older version you can use this but probably we don't have to so you have this uh, notebook instance settings and then you have this additional configuration so these are also a bit important so you have this life cycle configuration I mean, in most cases, uh, the notebooks are used for explorations and maybe in some cases deployment, we may not need a life cycle. So life cycle is if you just go to this, create a new cycle, new life cycle configuration, right? So it says this script will be running each time an associated notebook instance is started, including during initial creation. So basically, uh, when a notebook starts, let's say we want a particular script to run so we can set all those things in this uh, script of life cycle configuration so that's the thing again this can be useful for but for this purpose i mean it, it, this is like not that crucial for us and then you have this volume size in gb uh, what's the size that you need so you enter the volume size of the notebooks in in, in gb so uh, what's let's say you are just working with a small csv file and you are working with a small ml model so the default size is 5 gb so you can go with this but let's say that you want to load a llm that's like 100 gb or a deep learning model that's or you are going to train a deep learning model and you know that that model is going to be pretty huge and that that size can be like 50 gb so in that cases you can just edit this size you can let's say you can say 10 gb or whatever it is and the maximum amount is 16 tb so right so but we can just go with 5 for now so this is again another crucial thing because if you don't change this volume right so later when you kind of save a large file that's going to be a problem or let's say that you are loading a data set that's larger than 5 gb then that's going to throw you an error so you can change the settings here and then we have this minimum imds version this is also not that important so this imds stands for uh, instance metadata service so this is like uh, lets you get the metadata for this particular notebook instance so imds1 is like it's like a kind of a lesser secure but easily accessible one but imds version 2 is like more secure way of getting this uh, metadata details and so on so the default option is to you can just set this one itself so no issues there and then this is again a tricky thing so here you have this permissions and in encryption so here uh, you have to choose a role this role is something that i have already created so when you open your aws account for the first time you may not see this again if your it admin or the person who is administering the aws account right so if they have created the role you may see this but if not you can just create a new role uh again if you are using an organization account in most cases you won't be having the permission to create a role so again you have to go back to admin tell them that this is the uh, permission that i need so it's mostly like s3 and whatever uh, the you know permission reader needed to build this notebook instances you can request them and they would create a iam role for you so iam is like this identity access management that lets people to have different layers of permission so that they 
they can use like specific resources and so on it's just for the administration the admin to have control over the resource that we are creating so you can just go to this create a new role and say that uh, let's say in your account you you are maintaining different projects and you don't want people using a particular notebook to access a particular s3 so in that case you can specify like let's say they only should access this particular s3 bucket so this s3 bucket should not be accessed so you can specify that or uh you can just give this any s3 bucket if again if they can access any s3 bucket or you can say that s3 bucket that start with sage maker name sage maker or the object or basically that file should have the name sage maker and tag sage maker and the value you can create a tag and value pair just like a key value pair and say that the sage maker and, and true so only those files can be accessible so basically you can create all these permissions and and uh, let the user let the person who is creating this notebook instance to use those particular objects and buckets alone but for now i'm just going to say that any s3 bucket i can create a role but uh i mean i've already created a, a role so i'm going to use this so again if you are using an organization account if you give this create role that's going to throw you an error saying that you don't have enough permission to create a iam role so you have to go back to admin and they have to enable it so that's one thing so once you have choose chosen your uh, execution role right so if this is not selected you wouldn't be able to create your notebook instance now then we have this uh, root access root access is like kind of admin access uh, not on the account level but it's like system level so you have this notebook instance let's say that you have to install some packages or some softwares that requires admin permissions so think about uh, using your windows machine and running a software in admin mode right administrator mode so this is similar to this so when you want to access few things um, in your notebook instance right so you need a uh, root access so you can enable this so that we don't get any permission errors here this is different from this iam role so don't confuse these two things and then we have this encryption key so we can encrypt the data that's present in in our notebook instance and again we have this kms which is key management service so that's again another aws service you can encrypt your data but again for us that's not required for now to keep things simple and then uh, all the other things are optional so these are the key uh, details but again you can do some research on this network thing so we have this vpc uh, vpc is what we call as this virtual private cloud it's like segregating or, or creating sections within your aws cloud so we uh, resources created in a particular vpc cannot access resource in a different vpc so it's like a whole different concept so again all the network are kind of confined to it unless you open it so these are about this vpc you you don't have to kind of uh, go detail into this so if you want you can add a uh, I mean a git repository here as well but let's just create a notebook from scratch so let's not give this one and then we have tags so similarly to that s3 bucket tag, you can add a key value pair so that when you access it from a different resource it's easier to point to this particular notebook instance so these are all the settings so you can name it uh select the instance type which is really important this is just like you don't have much options here and then additional configuration the size is going to be really uh, uh, important and then we have this iam role root taxes and that is all you can just give this create notebook instance so this will create your notebook instance we'll see this message success your notebook instance is being created open the notebook instance when status is in service and open a template notebook to get started so you you are seeing the status right so this says pending that means your notebook is getting created and we have this creating it so this would take like maybe two or three minutes if you are creating again it depends on the instance that you are choosing it also depends on the uh you know region that you are at so there are like a lot of factors but smaller machines it kind of took two three minutes but i've seen larger machines taking like five to seven minutes so again it depends uh, and the other good thing about is we know that google collaborator if we kind of leave that notebook for some time it's going to stop running right this is not like that you can run run, scrum, run some script or let's say you can uh, run a cell that's training a model that let's say uh, is going to take two hours right so that uh, process will be kind of running in the background so these are like some advantages uh, and and the other advantage mainly is you know collaborating and the ability to give you access to larger instances so that we can work with more complex problems so that's i would that i would say is like the bigger factor for this okay so this i can close this so once this status changes to in service we can uh 
kind of go detail into this you can click this youtube demo sage making the name of this notebook instance and you can uh, it will again open a page and you will see like more details like what's the volume instance type and so on so more details will be there all the things that we have selected earlier and then we have other things you can go through the other things as well so yeah, we are, uh, here we are in notebook instance as i said for processing we would create a processing jobs later again as i said i'll definitely create videos on this and you have this algorithms hyper parameter tuning jobs the uh, again really interesting thing about this like you can automate all the steps of training the models uh, doing this hyper parameter tuning and more importantly deploying these as endpoints right so that it's like apa endpoints we can deploy the train models on as like in points and so on so we will discuss about all these things uh, in the coming videos too. okay so you can uh, keep refreshing this page to make sure that the notebook has uh, done creating so uh, the creation time is 2 11 and it created the instance at 2 15 so it take almost like four five minutes to create and we are seeing this in service status now you have this actions right open jupyter and open jupyter lab you can again choose any one of these you can either go with uh again jupyter kind of a thing it's again our jupyter notebook in our systems or you can also open jupyter lab application too so let's wait for this let me zoom it a bit again this is nothing different from a jupyter notebook that you would see in a machine so that's what like a lot of people would kind of miss as well so they may think that this is complex to create complex to work on but that's actually not so this is something that you already know we just have to follow a few steps to get here so that is all so after this you can just create a new, new notebook or you can upload a notebook that you already have so you can do all those things or you can also uh, create a folder from uh, here so you can create a text file folder you can access the terminal and so on so go to this new and you can have the you have this different option so you can create the r notebook Spar Ma spark magic uh, again that use the spy spark and so on so pytorch uh, environment tensorflow environment okay so for now maybe i can go with conda python 3 environment so pytorch and again when you go with the conda pytorch you probably like have all these uh, libraries packages dependencies like all those are like pre-installed so don't have to spend time on that so that's that's what i call as like a managed service like not just notebook instance and other aspects of SageMaker too so a data scientist or a machine learning engineer doesn't have to worry about creating and managing all these infrastructure again the cost is i would say a bit bit high but that's the thing right so they are helping you with all these things and and that's why we got to pay the other advantage of going with ec2 i would say that instead of having all this notebook instance you can use it for other purposes let's say that your uh, application uses a db you can probably set up a db there do something like that but if it's a sage maker right so it's it's almost going to cost you but you can only use it for ml training and so on so I would say that's the drawback but again we have to choose between this pros and cons and see like which one is suited for us so yeah that's other that's the thing and if you if you're using the sage maker you can if you want to connect to a db and then you have to create another db within aws resource rds and, and so on so all these things kind of comes into play but this is like a really interesting thing to discuss and and, and really interesting solution to kind of work on so when we learn about machine learning right so we just focus on just uh, working with the data processing it training the model but when you kind of work in in an organization and when you work on a project there are like a more thing attached to it so there is like an architecture that you have and you have to understand that architecture and build your system around it so your part doesn't stop and you know just cleaning the data training the model in some places in some organization people people are like constrained to it but i would say that it, it's better if you got to kind of work with this cross-functional team understand like where the data is coming from and then build your system based on that right so that's where the real interesting thing is and that's where you're going to get like a really good experience so with that being said so we have our notebook instance ready so here i can just uh, change this to test and be test notebook and then i can just uh, run some simple statement print let's say print stage so this has printed the SageMaker. So this is like a 
pretty smaller instance right so the multi 3 medium that has like 4 gb of memory so this is not going to be that fast i can probably give you a disclaimer for that so let's say that i'm importing sklearn this probably take a time so this sklearn library will be pre-installed here so you can also do a pip list again this will also take some time so you can do these things and, and look into this output so this is how you can create this sage maker notebook instance you can train your model explore it and so on so again all this collaboration is collaboration becomes easier uh, i would say the biggest advantage here would come in, in deploying this larger model so let's say that you have this large image model that you have to deploy so one simple way is to kind of deploy this here in sage maker so you can train this in sage maker notebook and that can be deployed in the SageMaker inference endpoints and people can use that info inference endpoint to kind of uh, you know get the output from the model so these are like few aspects so the other way you would do right so what you would do is like you would uh, let's say you are building a API instead of going with the SageMaker you would probably have a easy to uh, deploy your model as a API host it and then expose it but the process becomes easier so you can just easily kind of deploy your models once it's trained you can easily deploy those with those inference endpoints so the process becomes easier and that's like i would say the advantage of this so this is just like starting point of getting to know about the sage maker and and other stuff but i'll uh, definitely post more videos on this I, I know that there are not a lot of resources available readily available for this so i know this because when i kind of started working on this i kind of had a hard time to figure out a lot of things not just for notebooks but to you know how to deploy this and you would face a lot of errors and there are like not enough information available on how to do this so i'll just make you uh, you know that information available for you so that that is like easier for you so please keep following these videos subscribe to my channel and share this to someone you know who is learning AI or ml so let's just kind of learn this interesting stuff on AI, ML, cloud gen like, and whatnot so that's it and let's say that you are done with your work you have done training your model you're done with your work so we shouldn't forget to turn off our machine so that's important because as i said earlier the pricing and the charge that you're going to incur is based on the amount of time this notebook is running so let's say that this notebook has ran for 10 minutes i'm going to charge for those 10 minutes so once you're done close these notebooks so you have this uh, home thing right so you can close this come back to this notebook instance thing so here you can kind of select this and uh, you can just select this radio button thing and go to this actions and say stop so now your instance will be stopped and once it's stopped you won't incur cost so again your data will be maintained there so you might incur a bit of cost so you don't want any cost to be incurred once it's stopped you can delete this instance as well if you don't want that notebook anymore so if you want that you can just create a copy of this save it in your local and when you're creating a new instance you can upload it and use it but usually what I, what would happen right uh, you won't be incurred once i mean it is stopped even if you don't delete it if it's in stopped state it's not going to incur much i mean of course there will be a very little amount of charge but i mean that's probably like a, a minimum so you don't have to worry about that but i would suggest you to just stop it and delete it so that you don't have any worry about it okay so that's about it so after some time you will see this stop you can directly delete it once the machine is like running so once it has stopped uh, make sure that you are going to this action and you are deleting this from here okay